What do you think is the most expensive part of a battery energy storage system? Most people would say the batteries, obviously. But what if I told you that without the right supporting systems, even the most advanced batteries are just the dead wet? A battery energy storage system or BES is more than just the big box of batteries. Uh, it's, it's a complex integrated system designed to store electrical energy safely, efficiently and intelligently and to deliver it when it's needed the most. BES helps in better utilizing the renewable energy sources. Now to know more on the basic information about the battery energy storage system, uh, you can watch my introductory video on that. I'll put a link for it down in the description. In this video, we will focus on the different and the major subsystems that makes up a modern battery energy storage system and explain how they all work together to form a reliable energy solution. First one is the battery modules. This is the core of the system. Battery modules composed of uh, electrochemical cells are where energy is stored. For grid scale application, lithium ion is the most common choice, but depending on your needs, lead acid, sodium based or redox flow batteries might be used. Modules are arranged into racks and strings to achieve the desired voltage and capacity. Your total energy capacity depends uh, directly on the chemistry and the configuration you choose. Factor like uh, the cycle life, energy density, temperature tolerance and cost all vary by chemistry. The second is the battery management system or the BMS. Think of BMS as the system's nervous system. It constantly monitors voltage and current, temperature and state of charge. It prevents overcharging, deep discharging, overheating and ensures all cells are balanced. A good BMS doesn't just protect your batteries, it makes sure your entire system stays safe and efficient. It also communicates with higher level controllers like the EMS or SCADA. Then the next one is the power conversion system PCS that is inverters and chargers. Now since the batteries store DC power and most grid operates on AC, the PCS handles conversion both ways. It charges the batteries from AC and then discharge them back to AC for the grid. Advanced inverters can also support grid functions like voltage regulation and frequency response. The PCS must work hand in hand with both BMS and EMS to ensure seamless operation. What is EMS? We'll talk about that next. The next is the energy management system or the EMS. The EMS is the brain behind energy optimization. It decides when to charge, when to discharge or remain idle based on the electric uh, electricity prices, uh, grid frequency and renewable inputs. It ensures you get the most value out of your best by supporting functions like energy arbitrage, frequency response and renewable smoothing. It may even interface with the forecasting and market dispatch tools. The next one and the very important one is the thermal management system. Temperature has a huge impact on batteries life and performance. That's why BES includes thermal system ranging from a simple air ventilation to advanced liquid cooling. Uniform temperature control helps prevent hotspot and degradation, especially in the large system. The thermal system is usually integrated with uh, the BMS for real time control. The next is the protection and safety system. Safety is non-negotiable. Circuit breakers, fuses, surge protectors and isolation devices protect both equipment and personnel. Fire detection and suppressions are also included, especially in the containerized system. You will find uh, the DC switch gears as well, like circuit breaker, contactors, and disconnecting switches. This will be used at the DC side. Similarly, on the AC side as well, you will find AC switch gear after the transformers. The next is the step up transformers. Since BES often operates at lower voltages than the grid, 
transformers are used to step up the voltage levels. They also provide electrical isolation, protecting the bus from the grid faults. For example, a 480 volt bus might require transformation to 11 kV or 33 kV for grid connection. And now lastly, the most important part, the enclosure and the housing. Physical housing protects your bus from weather, dust and heat. Whether it's containerized, modular cabinets or custom built enclosures, design impacts everything from thermal performance to site safety. Feature like uh, access control, ventilation and fire rated materials are standard in most utility scale installations. So those are some of the key components of the modern battery energy storage system. I hope you understood uh, what are those systems and what is the function of each and every system that we use in the bus. If you found this video helpful then just give it a thumbs up. And if you want me to make a detailed course talking on the battery energy storage system, then do comment BESS. If I get enough comment, then for sure, uh, I'll be making a dedicated video series talking on the battery energy storage solutions. If you're interested to learn more about switch gears, I'll put link for those videos down in the description uh, for you to learn more about the switch gear. You can definitely go and check them out. Thank you so much for watching guys. I'll see you in my next one, but till then, Keep watching, keep learning.